Someone asked what would I do with these? I'm not sure yet, but let's get started. Here is the first of my two projects. I made this one for my mother. I ended up using the thankful sign as a base on this one and so I played off of those colors. She wanted one that was lighter and so the new velvet pumpkins at Dollar Tree worked perfectly for this along with a bunch of lamb's ear that I ended up getting from Hobby Lobby earlier in the season. I accented it with a few of the cotton, uh, raw cotton stems that I already had in my stash and just a couple of pops of darker color, I think they're daisy like flowers, I'm not exactly sure. But I love how it turned out. I think it will do really well in her house and where she plans on sitting it, you will be able to read the thankful sign perfectly. I put my signature bow on top with some black and white striped ribbon to pick up the black that's in the thankful and in the sides of the sign, which is Buffalo check. So now let's move on to project number two.
Here is my second project and I made this one for our house here. It is in the traditional fall colors. As most of you know, we are here in Michigan and I love when it is the change of seasons from summer to fall and all of the leaves on the trees are changing colors and so I like to bring that into my home in the fall season. I absolutely love how the ribbon that Dollar Tree carries with the maple leaves went so well with the LED candle. All of this can be made completely from Dollar Tree. I use the gather signs as you guys saw on the bottom and I am not concerned that you cannot read that it says gather because I literally purchased those in order to paint over them and use them in a different project. But I was really happy the colors really go well with this. Now the pumpkins in here that are willow reef I got at Hobby Lobby a couple of years ago and the ribbon that's on the top also came from Hobby Lobby that was already put together on a different project that I took off like four years ago and so I'm not sure you can get that same ribbon this year but I'm sure they have something like it. So Dollar Tree has some beautiful ribbon they have a really nice plaid that would go with something like this right now. Also the little wreath that I put in the bottom came from Michael's several years ago on clearance. However, all the leaves that are underneath that that I tucked in and I'm not sure I actually showed that on this project came from the Dollar Tree along with the berries and the sparkly leaves at the top. I love how this turned out and I will be displaying it probably in my living room this fall season. I know at the top I did not cover either one of the pumpkin stems because I really didn't think it necessary. I think this one looks perfect the way it is. On uh, my mom's if she wants it covered I will probably put some twine around it but I think hers works fine too. I also included a little burlap ribbon in her bow as you guys saw previously and I didn't mention that but let me know in the comment section down below which one of these were your favorite that I put together this one of course is mine because it's staying at my house though I really did like the one that I did for my mom and let me know if you guys want me to make something else with these reforms I've seen several other people do things that have turned out really really nice as well I was asked to do a very simple fall DIY because some people said that my DIYs are a little complicated. So, okay, let's do this. This is a window frame from Target's Bullseye Playground. It costs $5. You can make this out of four picture frames from the Dollar Tree and glue all the edges together. There are a hundred tutorials out on how to do that on YouTube already. So I purchased this from Target because it just saves me a step and it's only a dollar more. Next, this is some canvas art that I found that has little like birch trees with fall colors. So we are going to take it out of the packaging and glue it down to our Target. So next I'm going to take and I'm going to glue down a bunch of little leaves randomly, however I like them, on the glass signifying like falling leaves. These leaves all came from Dollar Tree last year and I just saved them all. They were individual in the pack. Dollar Tree has individual leaves in the pack this year also. I don't know if they have these glittery leaves. Or not because I already had some so I didn't look for any but I really like the size of these and I like the color
I have some little adornments that came off of some Dollar Tree picks. These are a couple of pine cones. I have this little pumpkin. It was in my stash. Dollar Tree does sell these on little picks, so you can get them, and little berries. And if you saw my last two pumpkin reforms, you know I have a ton of these little berries that came from Dollar Tree. They come on a long pick. So let's glue some of these on for a little bit of extra. I changed my mind about the bow. I didn't really care for it once I got it on there and I moved the one pine cone over to the other corner. So now we are just going to add the word fall across my canvas and we'll be done. my final project and again I'm really happy with how it turned out like I said before the window frame came from Target it is in the Target bullseye playground and it is five dollars you can do this with Dollar Tree picture frames and glue them together they have them in white already but if you don't like the size that comes in white you can spray paint or hand paint some that come in black or brown or gold or something like that i think this would be really nice with a whole frame in gold or silver around it too or even brown because it's like a traditional fall color then all of the leaves that i put on came from dollar tree but last year i don't know if they have exactly this pack of leaves i just randomly put them around as you saw no rhyme or reason to it and i think it turned out really nice i also used um, pine cones that came on some picks there like i said and my little uh canvas in the back came from dollar tree as well that basically was in the pack of canvas art that there's a variety, an assortment of them. But I've seen this exact canvas at about six Dollar Trees in my area, so you should be able to find it. If not, Dollar Tree carries greeting cards, and those would be really, really nice to emboss on a Dollar Tree canvas and then put over a window too. So, also I used my Cricut Explore Air 2 machine that I showed here on my channel before to print out the fall and put it down. It is in vinyl. However, Dollar Tree carries tons of stickers and you can use stickers for that or else you can just get, like I said, a greeting card that says something on it and then you don't even have to print off anything or else if your handwriting is really, really nice, you can print it off yourself. So. That's it for this DIY. It's really simple and easy to do and fun. Your kids can even do this with you. Fall is almost here and so is pumpkin spice.
here is my final project. I was inspired by a piece that I saw on Instagram and I will insert a picture of it right here. And so I decided to make my very own version. As you can see, the Instagram post is only half a pumpkin that is mounted on the wall and it's a little bit bigger than this one. I decided I like to make mine freestanding so I could move it around my kitchen during fall season, I'm probably going to try to put it by my coffee bar. So this was a very easy piece to do. You can make it completely with Dollar Tree products. Dollar Tree has carvable pumpkins. However, none of my stores had them in yet. So I went ahead and used a pumpkin from a Walmart that I had. Now, if you buy an already orange pumpkin, of course you don't have to paint any of the orange, but since mine was a weird color, I went ahead and painted the whole thing. Also, the handle, I used a foam roller that has a wire in it from the Dollar Tree. And I said in my wagon, <laughs> Uh, DIY if you saw that never ever ever paint like a pool noodle or foam because once it dries it will stay but if you pick it up and handle it it will flake off I don't know if you could prime it and it wouldn't flake off but I painted this one and if you hold that handle and you mess with it the paint will flake off however if you're just gonna let it sit like I'm gonna let mine set and even if I move it I'm gonna pick up the pumpkin it is fine the rest of it, as you saw, is very easy to do. I did not have a orange and white striped straw, so I did use a little white vinyl and just taped off my straw. You could do that with any kind of washi tape or whatever if you have an orange straw or with orange washi tape if you have a white straw if you can't find an orange and white striped straw. And the actual cinnamon sticks are real cinnamon sticks that I did purchase at Dollar Tree. I had a chunkier glitter that I already had in my stash, but Dollar Tree does also sell a glitter or in, as you saw in the inspiration piece, they used just some gold string to make it look like karma was swirled on top. I thought sprinkles would be a better choice. Oh, and also I used my Cricut Explorer Air 2 to do the lettering and I put it all on by hand. I didn't think I wanted to use transfer paper since it was a painted pumpkin. That took a little while. A lot of people said they only picked up one of these and they asked if I could make something with just one of these. Okay, let's get started. Okay, here where you're gonna get to your last bead to put on, what you're gonna do is then cover the end with some hot glue. And then slide your bead on. Be very careful not to burn yourself with the glue. And push it down. Then you're going to take and place hot glue in the end of that last bead and then glue it back to the frame. Be careful so you don't burn yourself. Like that.
it's my final project and I have to say I am absolutely in love with it. I made this for our front porch. We have a covered front porch and this is the wreath that I'm going to be hanging on our front door on the outside of our security screen. It is hanging here inside my house right now because lighting, as you can see, is pretty bad everywhere. But I wanted to be able to get the best picture for you guys so you could see exactly how it turned out. I am in love with the wood bead detail that I decided to add to this wreath. It was very easy to do. As you saw, I used a wire cutter that actually came from the Dollar Tree and just snipped them off at the top. It doesn't take long. You do need to turn it back and forth and to wear it down a little and then you can just break it off and add the beads to it. And then I suggest if you're going to be putting this anywhere but indoors to use some E6000 or Gorilla Glue along with hot glue to secure it back on. I am going to be putting this on my front porch and so I did secure it with a little Gorilla Glue on the actual part that I cut off and it is very, very secure. I was inspired to use these beads by my sister Chrissy who has her own YouTube channel that is now called Make It With Chrissy and in her uh, channel art you can see the wood bead wreath that she did and so I thought it would work perfectly on this and I do love how it turned out. Those beads came from Michael's store. They are $3.99 a pack, however you can use a coupon for them. And I ended up using the size that keeps 34 beads in the pack. And I used four packs in order to do this. I actually went to the store to get the much bigger beads. However, my store was out of them, so I settled for these and I actually like this size better. All of the ribbon on this also came from Michaels. They have it right now for 40% off. And so each one of these ribbons, the thankful one, the stripe one, and the pumpkin one, ended up costing me $2.40 for a roll that has 12 feet on it. And I am in love with the thankful one. I am actually going to go back to the store to try to get another one, but my store only had the one and I was really glad that I could get it. Also the berries and the little leaves with the pine cone came from Michaels as well. The reef form and the ribbon that's on the back with the maple leaves came from the Dollar Tree. I really wanted to make a reef that I could keep and use year after year in different spots of my house. And so I wanted this one to be really, really special. Not that you cannot make this completely from Dollar Tree, but once I saw the thankful uh, ribbon and I had coupons and my mother and my granddaughter with me at Michael's, I kind of just ran wild with this color scheme and decided to do it all from Michael's products. Now this can be customized any kind of way you want. If you're not into traditional Thanksgiving or fall colors, then you can do this with buffalo check on the back, like black and white and still the beads on the front. You could use the buffalo, the actually gray and white kind of buffalo check baby blanket that they have at Dollar Tree to put on the back of this and it would still work out real well. Dollar Tree also carries little beads. They come in different sizes in a pack and you could mix those instead of using the wood beads from Michaels and you can do this whole project from Dollar Tree because they have pine cones, they have berries, they also have leaves, and they have some beautiful ribbons right now, including the one that's on the back. I think this would work out with stripes on the back of this. You could end up actually maybe finding a nice gift bag and cutting it up and putting it on the back of it. The possibilities are just endless. Lacey and welcome back to our space. So today in our space I have a video for you guys which is a re-upload of a video that I did a long time ago. Now if you are an oldie but goodie you will recognize this DIY because I did it on this channel when it was called Chad and Lacey TV. So for all of my new subscribers you should know this channel used to be mine and my boyfriend's and we did all kinds of different little 
uh, tag videos and recreations and some vlogging and stuff. However, once his job picked up, he was unable to join me on the channel and it changed to Lacey's Space in 2017. And so prior to that, I had uploaded a DIY that I did that I am in love with that I've been asked to share. I asked you guys on Instagram and on Facebook if you wanted to see it. But before that, other friends of mine said, why don't you share that video? Because it wasn't out very long when it was Channel Lacey TV. The audio was messed up on it and there was also a big blank section because I was learning to do YouTube and editing and corrupt footage and so I am going to be trying to show you what I did where that corrupt footage was. It, it uses these carpable pumpkins. So let's get started. Now here we are with the finished project and the footage for where I did the adornments underneath the charger top is all missing. That was all corrupt and the audio was messed up after all of that. So let me tell you exactly how I did it. Now first of all, down on the bottom pumpkin, this black is a leather. It is leather ribbon. I know they sell this at Michael's. It is not over in the ribbon section. It's over with the leather working stuff. So I know a lot of people are going to say, where did you get that? What is it? It is leather. I already had it in my stash. I ended up with a big roll of it for a very long time. I'm out of it now. You don't need to use leather there. You can just put another ribbon. You can put a black one. If you want the same colors that I have, I was going for a black and white kind of theme with a little bit of muted orange because my kitchen is mainly black and white most of the time. So let me show you all the ribbons and tell you how I did this. Number one, you put down the charger first. If you put down all of the ribbons and stuff on top of the pumpkin that's on top, your charger will not sit straight and it will not be level and you won't be able to use it for anything. I actually use mine for serving muffins and stuff as you can see in the picture that was in the thumbnail and that I'm going to show you here at the end. But the charger is not food safe. So you have to put another plate or a doily or something down on it. It says right on the charger it's not food safe. Now to do the ribbons I had this black and white polka dot ribbon. It came from Joann's or Michael's. Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby they all have black polka dot ribbon on white right now. So if you want one exactly like this, that's where you would get it. This one here is a black ribbon with gold chevron. I also got this at Joann's, I do believe it was, or Michael's, I'm not sure which store, carries this uh, 360 line. But I've had this in my stash forever and so if you want that you can look for that at one of those stores. I also ended up getting this 
Halloween ribbon and it is a light light orange. I wanted something with light orange. It just happens to have a little bit of black around the edge and I thought it was really cute. I also ended up using this black and white stripe ribbon and they have this everywhere. I think I ended up getting this one actually from Walmart. Walmart carries a lot of these ribbons too. I can't guarantee that the black and white with the polka dot is there but I know they do have polka dot ribbon and it might be cheaper than the craft store. Also Dollar Tree carries a bunch of ribbons. These are the ones I have on hand right now but they even have more and some prettier ones that you can do this with all Dollar Tree products and you don't have to purchase anything from another craft store. Also it has leaves and little berries underneath of it. They're really light colored leaves and light berries with a little bit of gold on them. Those came from Dollar Tree as well. I just took them off of multiple different um, garlands that I had that had Dollar Tree products on it so I could get all the lighter leaves instead of using greens and stuff. These are all light orange. So in order to put these ribbons on, since you put down the charger first, you take like the black and white one if you want to do it like I did, and you just cut a piece, fold it in half, Put a little hot glue on it and then tuck it underneath. That's how I did it. I tucked it underneath and glued it in there. It's just and that easy. The same thing with the leaves. I just took a leaf, a little dot of hot glue and pushed it in there and the same thing with the berries. All of that footage was not available. That's another reason why the video ended up coming down. This is quick. It's easy. I will warn you, do not spray paint the orange pumpkins. They will melt with the spray paint and look horrible and you will be angry. So make sure you hand paint them. You can chalk paint them. You can acrylic paint them. I have done both. The white on these is acrylic paint. The reason I adorn them the way that I did is because I saw them in a several pictures and at like places like Home Goods, and I thought it was really nice. Also, the little thumbtacks, these are kind of antiqued. Dollar Tree sells thumbtacks in silver and in gold. I don't know if they have an antique one, but if you want yours to look like this, you could buy the gold ones and then put a whole bunch of them down in a piece of cardboard and then hand paint or spray paint over them. And then once they're dry, take them out and put them in the pumpkin. That's just the easiest way to paint thumbtacks that I have found. Video. Hi loves, it's Lacey and today we're going to be doing a, another DIY for the fall season and we're going to be utilizing mostly Dollar Tree items but we also have this fence plank from Target's Bullseye Playground. So let's get started. Okay the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to use some leftover foam board that I have. I have black, you can use white, it really doesn't make a difference, it's your preference. I'm going to be covering up quite a bit of this, but we need to cut the pieces to the length of this board and we're going to put some sides and a front part on it. Let's get into that. on it. I don't know if you can see it with the camera, but there is a grid so you can follow the lines that are on it. I don't think the camera is picking it up, but that's what I did. I measured out five inches here and two and a half inches there. So it should pretty much meet up and it does. If it's a little off, it doesn't make a difference because we're going to cover all of this up, but we do need to create a box that fits the bottom of so this. So here it is. Nothing is glued together. I'm going to put a few cross ones through here this size out of some of the leftover pieces that I have so that it will sit sturdy. You don't need to put a bottom on it. It'll be fine if we just put a few cross ones across here and then we'll glue it all together. And believe me, this is the hardest part of this. 
Okay, so here's what our base looks like underneath. You can see these aren't even perfectly even. It really doesn't make a difference. I made it to fit under this crossbar here. So it's like a little stage or whatever because we are going to be using this as our backdrop and this is what we're going to be putting most of our craft things on is the little base. Now, you do not have to make this. I'm trying to make this completely from Dollar Tree products and this one board from Target's Bullseye Playground. Okay, now that we are waiting for our piece to dry, I laid it down. It's dried for about a half an hour or so. I'm going to leave it for another hour, I do believe. But while we're waiting, we can do some of the other parts. So I purchased this Dollar Tree doll furniture piece, and it was originally lavender, as you can see underneath. Then I spray painted it a burgundy color for another project and changed my mind and decided I wanted it for this project. So it is spray painted heirloom white, and that is a rust-oleum color. I had already spray painted it when I decided I was going to use it for this project, and so that's what we're going to be doing. Then we are going to take, or I already took, these burlap ribbons from Dollar Tree. I have the tan one. This is like a brown or a greenish brown and orange. And I'm going to cut pieces and lay them on top of each other, which I already did like this. The tan is underneath, the orange is on top, and then the brownish color is on top of that. I squished them together and just put some hot glue on them. And then I cut the ends jagged just willy-nilly, nothing special. And I am going to drape it over the side of this chair. So it looks like a blanket. This took this ribbon that I absolutely love and I use in my Dollar Tree pumpkin wreath form with the beads and folded a piece over and cut it and then glued the sides, flipped it inside out and made this little pillow. So I'm going to have a pillow and this version of what would be a throw blanket on this couch. And I think it looks really, really cute. So, Okay, next I have this little lantern that was in the Halloween section at Dollar Tree. And I do not want this insert that's in here, which is the little witch and jack-o'-lanterns. So we're gonna take the top off and we are going to remove that. And then we're going to cut out sections of this ribbon that Dollar Tree carries right now that I use also in my pumpkin reform with the little beads on it. And we're going to line the insides of this lantern with this because I think it's really, really pretty. And I like the fact that this lantern is an LED candle and you can turn it on. So, so all I'm gonna do is just hold a piece in front of it and try to cut it as close as I can. And trim it up a little and then stick a little hot glue inside and try to not burn myself and press it. <laughs> Okay, next I have this little pot that came from the succulents that Dollar Tree carries. I saved a bunch of these and I know I have a brown one somewhere, but for the life of me, I can't find it. So I have decided to cover it with twine. 
I think this will add to the look of this project and so I'm just going to be hot gluing it all the way around, all the way up. Now we're going to add some Dollar Tree florals to this. I found these and I don't know what they're called. The tag on them just said bouquet filler. Now our complete base and everything is dried, so we're going to start putting this together. So on the bottom there, I am going to be placing some reindeer moss or some floral moss, whichever one you have. I have some here in this bag that I used before, and some of it is actually glued down to some like green felt. So I'm going to use a little bit of this, and I'm just going to put it like around the edges and to cover up the black here to mimic that we are outside in the grass. I'm not going to use it on the front here because I'm going to place something else there. And I don't need a ton of it. I just want to get it around the edges. Okay, next I'm going to take these river rocks or stones from Dollar Tree and glue them all the way around the bottom of the base. I know you guys are like, why did you make this base? And then now you're going to glue rocks to it. Initially, I was going to put some words across the front here, but I think that's going to be overkill. I know I'm quite extra when I do these um, DIYs. And so now and my vision has changed a little and I think I'm just going to glue the stones around to cover up this bottom part and it's going to make it look a little more homey. You'll see in the end exactly what my plan was. Okay, here's what that looks like now. I simply glued the rocks randomly, trying not to put two of the same color right next to each other. And as you can see, I have an entire pile. I don't know, that's about 14 or so rocks left over. Now I did the entire front and then on the sides, I kind of did down the bottom and let some of the moss come down. I use the reindeer moss from Dollar Tree. I wanted to make sure I use as many Dollar Tree products as I possibly can. And I did both sides of it like that and I really like how it turned out now your stones may not fit in as tightly as mine and I made sure I got the bigger river rocks that had this variegated color because of the back of my thing but they have them in solid black and they have smaller stones so if you get the smaller stones I can't guarantee that it's only going to take one bag but where they didn't fit completely together then I then put in some moss into the big gaps. There are little gaps and I didn't worry about that, but I just dropped some hot glue in there and put some moss. Now, I have these little hooks that I got from Dollar Tree a while back. I think they came four or five in a pack. And I also have these wood stems that came from Dollar Tree earlier in the season. If you can't find these, you can simply get a stick out of your yard and cut it up and it'll be easy to use. I had Chad put the hook in one of the wood stems because I could not find a hook long enough at my local Dollar Tree to be able to do this. And so I'm going to glue that to the center of this end post fairly high up. Now I'm going to add my seat here to the bottom and pretty much in the middle. I scoot it over just a bit. I'm going to add my planter that I made. And then over on this side, I'm going to add one of the Dollar Tree hay bales. I waited to the last minute to open this because I know it's going to be quite messy. Last 
lastly, I took some more of those wood stems and I glued them together, as you can see here. And I never make a project like this without having some kind of tree. And so I had planned to take this and add some stems off of some flowers that I had before. You know, just some stem pieces like this and add them to this to make a tree. And I am going to do that. But then I was going to add some of the little leaves. So I had like actual fall leaves. And I'm going to try that. But I think I actually want to add some mums because I have these beautiful mums here from Dollar Tree. And I was thinking maybe those would look better. So let's see what I come and up with. And here's my final project. And I really, really like how it turned out. This is very easy to do. The only issue is there are little projects that you have to do to go on this overall project and they are a little time consuming. They're not hard to do at all like putting the twine around the little pot that I had or even putting changing the insert in the lantern. It just takes a little bit of time. Plus I did a couple of extra steps because I didn't like the color of the pumpkin so I repainted both the white white and the orange to more of a creamy white and a lighter orange. The bonus for that is you can still see all the little speckles that are on the pumpkin through it so I didn't exactly change what the pumpkin style was. I just lighten the colors up a little bit and for the rocks on the bottom I think that was a great added touch I think it gives to the whole backyard kind of patio feel however if you are going to be doing this and placing this outside or anywhere where it's going to be super hot use E6000 or Gorilla Glue or some other industrial strength glue because hot glue will not keep these stones on that foam board the whole project will set up by itself I did not have an issue with that as long as you reinforce the front of it and the bottom with the stone it definitely helps that board stay up because it is a little bit heavy i am leaving it right here in the back of my kitchen on my sideboard and it will be part of my backdrop for fall i also went with just the leaves over on the tree and i think that turned out really well too you could do flowers you could do anything you really want plus you could change this color scheme from traditional fall colors to something lighter or something brighter whatever goes with your decor I bought this chicken wire ribbon at Hobby Lobby on sale for $2.39 a roll. Let's make something with it. Here we go. So we are going to cut strips with this that are about 42 inches long for a standard wine bottle. And these rolls of chicken wire are 15 feet long. So, and like I said, it is chicken wire, so the ends, when you cut them, they're gonna be sharp. Be very careful with it. On one roll, you will get four of the strips. Because once you cut your strips, you're gonna work with one of them at a time. And as you see, they stick together, so be careful. You're going to take your strip and then fold it in half and find out where the middle is. Then leave a little bit of that bend in the middle and put your wine glass on top of it. Now mine is empty and so it is gonna move it just a little. And we're going to bend the chicken wire around like this and kind of try to make it into a curved shape. I'm gonna take the ends and push them together Like I said, be careful, it is chicken wire. And then try to twist them just a little. You don't have to get crazy. So they'll turn up toward the spout and look like this. And you want this bottle to be in the middle of that bend. If it moves, don't worry about it because we're not gonna glue the bottom yet. Okay, 
And that's what that's going to look like. Can you tell what we're trying to make? Okay, as you can see, we are trying to make a pumpkin form. And don't worry if it looks wonky. We just want to get all of these glued to the stem to start with. And we're going to be, we're using hot glue right now just to get them on. Then we're going to use a little E6000 and then you'll see how we'll secure it perfectly. Here is our pumpkin form going around with the chicken wire. So now what we're gonna do, I use hot glue to put this on. I'm gonna be trying to use it on my porch. So I want it to last with the elements. So I'm going to put some E6000 glue all the way around all of those connections onto the wine bottle. Then, before we secure it, I have some fairy lights. Okay, here I'm making the stem, and as you can see, I'm using the nautical rope just as is. I tried to use it taken apart, but it was just fraying everywhere and I didn't like that. We're not going to see most of it anyway by the time I'm done with this. You guys all know how extra I can be. I just want to make a stem here on this pumpkin. So I'm simply just wrapping it around and gluing it and I glued it to the battery pack and to this chicken wire that is obviously not going to come off for any reason whatsoever. Now, if you saw everything in the video, I decided to go ahead and use the rope that's a full piece of rope instead of taking the pieces apart. I started to do that, but it shed really bad. And you're not going to see it very much once I start embellishing this. Now, the easiest way to do this, because I know a lot of people are going to say, well, why didn't she just crisscross all the pieces down, glue them to the bottom of the bottle, and then glue the sides up? I did attempt that. It is harder to do that way because you need to manipulate the wire quite a bit, and it will pull it off the bottom if you're using just hot glue. If you are going to be doing it with E6000 that way and gluing the bottom down, you're going to have to wait for a long time for it to dry. And so I didn't want to do that. I wanted to get it put together and then just use a little E6000 to guarantee that this is going to stay together because I want to put it on my porch. Now when you're done gluing all the top parts to the neck of the bottle and you do your rope at the top, it's going to look a hot mess. This wire will be all bent up. It won't look like this. You'll have to just shape it after. It didn't take me long, less than five minutes. And I like the shape of it. If you're OCD like me and you think it should be perfectly even all the way around, don't make this project because it won't be. Mine is not perfectly even all around, but it looks like a regular pumpkin. You know, they grow in the wild. They're not perfect. So the next thing we're going to do is then glue the bottom sections to the bottom of the wine bottle. And I want it to lay as flat as possible. So I'm going to do it inside of the bottom of the wine bottle. It does have an indentation in it. And then I'm going to take a piece of old car 
cardstock that I had left over and cut it in a circle and glue that on top of the bottom, like, you know, underneath with a little E6000 to guarantee it's gonna stick. So now it's time to decorate the top. You know, pumpkins have leaves and things and you guys already know how extra I am. So I have all kinds of ribbon. I have two of them sitting here, but I have a whole box of ribbon sitting by me. And I just thought, how cool would it be to use my pumpkin ribbon on a pumpkin? So I pulled that one out. I also pulled this one out because it had little gold wire. And since the chicken wire is gold, I thought it was good. And it also had green. I have a few more sitting here. I might use some of them too. I have a whole bunch of little pieces of things that I keep from other projects that I didn't use at all. And so all of those are sitting here. And then I have these beautiful picks that I got from Hobby Lobby a couple of years ago on clearance at the end of the season. And I have two of them. I didn't even take off the tags yet. They were regular $2.99, but you know, I probably got them something like 90% off. And I think these will go perfect. I am not worried about the stem, like I said before, because I'm going to cover up a lot of it. And I'm also going to cover up the light box so you won't see it. So let's get to decorating and then I'll show you how it looks in the end. Here is my final project. I am in love with it. I cannot believe that it turned out this nice. When I saw that Hobby Lobby had the chicken wire ribbon, I knew I wanted to make something with it other than a bows. So I found my ribbon, the silver one, over a month ago and my little brain just started ticking and I came up with this. I thought I could make a metal pumpkin. I have seen metal pumpkins and I've seen pumpkins with a little chicken wire on them, but I said, let's make the whole thing from scratch with just chicken wire with no form or anything with it. And this is how it turned out. Now you could have done this with a tall hurricane um, vase to go in the middle, but I figured why spend the extra dollar at Dollar Tree to buy that when I already had some empty wine bottles and I could use the neck for the stem. And so that is what I did. So the chicken wire right now at Hobby Lobby is on sale for $2.39 for 15 feet of it. And I use one spool of it. I did buy two, as you guys saw. And if I were you, I would buy two just in case if you want to make this, you have mistakes or your um, wine bottle is bigger than what mine is. You might want to make your pumpkin bigger. And like I did, I would glue on the tops to the neck of the bottle before I glued the bottom. You could glue the bottom first if you want. I was working on doing that, but it will just come loose unless of course you glue it down with hot glue and E6000 and let it dry overnight and come back to the project the next day. And we all know I don't have patience for that. So <laughs> what I did was do it the way I did and make the stem and then it's easy to manipulate the bottom and get it glued. Now this whole project is super, super light, super light. I'm gonna be putting it on my porch, I think. I am going to then take a piece of leftover scrap wood. I think it's a six by two or a six by one that I have. And I am going to glue this down to this. I may even staple the chicken wire down to it because if the wind hits this, it's going over. It is that light. If you make it, you will see. So if you're planning to put it somewhere outside, you will have to weight it down and I did sneak in one <laughs> glitter pumpkin. You have to have a pumpkin on a pumpkin for this project, so I snuck one in. I don't think it goes well with it. It's, it doesn't bother me at all. So you can decorate this any kind of way you want. They have this um, chicken wire in silver like normal. They have gold and they had copper. I really wanted to do the copper, but they don't have the copper anywhere in my area, so I ended up doing the gold and I really do like it. So that is it for this video. I think I said the worst part about this project, maybe I didn't, is the hot glue hairs that you get. Chicken wire's in love with it. It 
is like a magnet. So be really careful when you're using your hot glue where you get the long strands when you pull your gun away it will get entangled in the chicken wire and that actually for me was the worst part of this entire project is picking it all out so now that is it for this video i want to thank you guys so much for liking for watching and always sharing my videos and if you are not a member here at lacy space yet i don't know why not go ahead and smash that subscribe button become a member hang out with us for a while we have a lot of fun here also, I want to let you guys know that my sister Chrissy, who has her own channel here on YouTube, Make It With Chrissy, and I will put it across the screen here in the description box down below, is also making something with a chicken wire. And I do believe it may be something in the same theme as my video. She will be posting this here on Friday. It is Thursday night right now. I'm going to be posting this shortly, I do believe. So go over and check her out and see what she made with her chicken wire as well. Also, one more thing, I wanna say a shout out to my girl, George. She's been on this channel before. It's my BFF, Michelle. I burnt myself this time. <laughs> she burns herself every single time she uses her hot glue gun on my channel and I never burn myself ever. And chicken wire doesn't catch hot glue when it falls through it, but your hand does i burnt my thumb so you guys be really really careful with this don't do what i did because it was pretty bad so george yep i did it this time also if you like you can follow me on instagram it's lacy space the same way that it is spelled here and i will catch all of you in my next video bye loves